Okay, now we are on lesson 26, which is an important chapter here on the imperative. And we, imperatives are, we have them in English, right? They're, they're commands, they're, um, or even requests to do something. So they're, they're, I don't think imperatives are too hard to understand. The, the most different thing between Greek and English imperatives is that Greek has a third person imperative. So in, in English, whenever we command something like loosen, there's always an implied you or you all loosen. We're, we're always talking directly to the person we're commanding. Where Greek has a third person command, if we're talking about uh, uh, he, she, or it to do the command. So let him loosen or let it be done. Um, uh, if you know the, the Lord's Prayer, these are used, the third person imperative is used a lot. So we will we'll look at the Lord's Prayer um, to, to show examples of this. Um, so you have to memorize new forms here. Notice here that luete, the eta ending, is the exact same as the indicative. So this could either be um, command, loosen, or it could mean you all are loosening or you all loosen your shoes, whatever it is, um, in the indicative. So you have to be able to tell by context um, whether this is a imperative or whether it is an indicative. And we'll see an example of that in um, the Lord's Prayer passage that we'll look at. Um, so there is present forms. There are present passive forms. So be loosened, let it be loosened. And then there are also um, aorist forms. So just like the participle where um, and, and the subjunctive where we have present and aorist forms. And you shouldn't be thinking past and present tense. You should be thinking only aspect. So aorist and present, you shouldn't be thinking tense, but the reason we only have present and aorist forms of the imperative, subjunctive, and so on outside of the indicative is because we're, we're only concerned with aspect, the aorist being that perfective aspect, present being the imperfective, the ongoing aspect. Um, and so there are also aorist forms that you have to memorize here. You can see the sigma alpha, which is characteristic of the aorist, and it's all the same forms except for the second singular. So going back here, so luete and the aorist becomes lusate. So the only difference there is the, the sigma alpha uh, in the middle. And that's true for um, a lot of the forms here. So that's helpful that there's overlap there. Um, there's aorist middle and then aorist passive with the theta eta. We're used to seeing theta eta and the aorist passive. And then there are also second aorists. So these have the same endings as the present imperative, but there's a stem change. There's the aorist stem that the present endings are added onto. So you don't have to memorize any new endings. Um, and we've been reading the aorist for a long time now. So you should be able to recognize when the aorist stem is being used. Um, so there's second aorist there. Okay, then the question comes, how do you how do you translate them? How do you translate between the difference between the aorist and the present? And notice how Croy says, the aorist and the present tense imperatives will often be translated the same. And I would say, as beginning students, I <laughs> don't worry about uh, translating them uh, differently at this point. Um, often the present imperative is used for general commands um, and aorist are used for more specific commands when you want a person to do a specific thing or something like that, um, where present would be used for like, you know, don't steal as kind of like a, a general universal command. But um, I, yeah, I I just wouldn't worry about it too much. Just translate it as imperative in an English normal imperative whenever you come across it. 
Um, and then something to point out here is that prohibitions can be, uh, prohibition just being a negative command rather than, you know, loosen your shoes. This would be don't loosen your shoes. I'm prohibiting, I want to prohibit you from loosening your shoes. The may not plus the imperative can be used for that, but also may plus the aorist subjunctive can be used for a prohibition and we translate it like an imperative. So let's go, um, I guess, Amy, it just always has unusual forms and so they have them here and then it goes into exercises. Um, so now let's look at the Lord's Prayer here. So it begins here, Hutos un pros ugeste. So here, this looks like a normal um, second person plural middle present, but notice that it's translated as an imperative because it doesn't really make sense. Thus, therefore, you all are praying. <laughs> no, they, they asked you how to pray, Jesus. Why are you telling them this is how you're praying? No, like in, in context, you can tell that this is a command. You all pray, pray like this, pray thus. And then it goes, Pater, Hemon, um, Father of us who is in the heavens. And then we have our first um, third person uh, infinitive here. So, Hagias Theto to Onomasu. So, the third person object here is your name. And you can see the theta eta there for the aorist passive. So, rather than, <laughs> um, we're not commanding the name to hollow something, but we're commanding the name to be hallowed using that passive. So, your name be hallowed or be made holy. Let your name be made holy. And we have, again, here, here we have a second aorist. Uh, Erchomai with the Elthon Eristem. So here we have He Basilea Su, your kingdom come. Here, this is not passive, but this is um, the kingdom is the thing coming, right? Let your kingdom come. The kingdom is coming. Um, then we get Tothelimasu uh, here for this one is the third person for Genetheto. Um, this is from Genomai. And we can see the aorist passive, but here it's middle. Its function is a middle here. So your will become or happen. <laughs> it's hard to translate. Um, that's why we just say be done. So your will be done as in heaven and on earth. And then we have, so here we have an accusative. And so we have to find the verb. And so here we have dos, which we haven't learned me verbs yet, but this is just a second person imperative. So you implied, talking to God, our father, father, give to us today the bread of us, the epiusion, which is translated as daily, but um, difficult word to uh, translate there. And forgive to us, another uh, me verb that we haven't, we haven't learned yet, but it's a second person imperative. So you, Father, forgive to us our debts as we also have for, or forgive our debtors. This is another me verb. So now we get a prohibition with the last verse. So, and do not lead us into temptation. But notice here, this is from uh, Ace Ferro. So this is an aorist stem. But the, the ending there, you can see is subjunctive with the, the eta being the lengthened ending there in the Yoda subscript. So here, the prohibition is not using the imperative form. It's using the subjunctive form, but we translate it like an imperative. So do not lead us into temptation, but rescue us from the evil, whether evil or evil one. So we can see it got lots of imperatives here in the Lord's Prayer. So if you memorize the Lord's Prayer, you, you can hopefully have a lot of these forms uh, memorized. 
um, as you go about um, memorizing these forms. So, hey, okay. there's exercises, and you can do those for practice.